que es un placer para mí presentar a Mohamed Noor. Eh, yo conocí a Mohamed porque era el asesor de una persona muy querida para mí, Daniel Ortiz Barrientos. Mohamed hizo su doctorado en la Universidad de Chicago. Es del linaje de Don Sansky y muchos otros, Coy, Moore, etcétera, etcétera. Ah, después hizo un postdoc en Cornell y trabajó durante siete años en Luciana State University en el Departamento de Biología para pasar después, desde hace seis años, a, a el Departamento de Biología en Duke University, Carolina del Norte, de Estados Unidos. Mohamed es una autoridad reconocida en investigación en especiación a nivel mundial, utilizando drosófila como su modelo de estudio, y hoy nos va a presentar en inglés. Uh, él habla bastante rápido, ténganle paciencia, o él tratará de hablar despacio para tener más paciencia a nosotros, pero estoy segura que va a ser una charla muy interesante. Por favor, Variation you see in DNA sequence and what causes the association. 
The system in which we'll be studying this is the Drosophila pseudospira Drosophila porcipula system. These are phenotypically identical siblings. This could be either one. We don't know which one. <laughs> They're exactly the same. Their hybrid males are sterile, but the hybrid females are fertile. So there's an opportunity for some gene flow. They diverged about a half a million to a million years ago. And they do hybridize in nature, but not very much. Something like 1 in 10,000 flies is a hybrid. They're native to North America. I'll show you where they are. They also, there's a small population here in South America, too. They uh, occur in both in some areas. But both genomes of these species have been sequenced. So we have a full genome sequence with which to work. So let me show you where they're found. We saw the Priscillus and Pseudobscura around here along the west coast of North America. And Pseudobscura extends this range quite a bit further south. There's also another subspecies called Priscillus Pseudobscura bogotana, which is actually found here in Colombia. So yeah, these are found together. There's also an outgroup species I'll mention in passing called Rosalba Miranda that's also found here in the purple. So we have Pseudobscura for Similis and Miranda here. We have Pseudobscura here by itself and Pseudobscura here by itself. Okay? So today's talk I'll divide it in half. For the first half, we'll talk about species formation and the role of chromosomal inversions, flips in DNA sequence, allowing species to persist. The second half will come back to the type variation. So this work, um, I'll actually divide the first half into two halves, too. First, I'll give you some background, and I'll show you some of our newer DNA sequence-based approaches. This work was collaborative, uh, largely with Carlos Machado, who's also a Colombian, who uh, did most of the DNA sequence variability convergence part I'll be showing. But we primarily worked on genetic studies of all the trait differences between your software students and your process, everything that makes them distinct. And there are a lot of traits. So we started off with this with that State University. We started off doing genetic mapping studies of everything that made these distinct. So with the hybrid male sterility, hybrid gene viability. There's a hybrid courtship dysfunction that if you present a hybrid male with a female, he just sits there. Doesn't court, doesn't be. <laughs> Very sad. <laughs> but it's not good. <laughs> we also studied like genetics of mating discrimination by females, courtship songs. So when, they, when a male is not stupid like that one, when a male wants to mate with a female, he vibrates a wing and makes a sound. It's very species specific to experiment results different from that. So we map that difference and also their hypercarbon differences on their critical So this shows you what the genome looked like. They have five chromosomes, one is very little. But importantly, these species differ by three inversions. So again, this is just a flip in DNA sequence. So it just flips around, so the order of genes is separated. So there's two on the X chromosome, one on the second chromosome. The third chromosome actually has a lot of variation. There's a lot of different inversions, but some are found within both species. Importantly, inversions prevent single crossovers in these regions. That's a very important point for there. So you don't get crossover products within the inverted regions and hybrids of these species. So we spent a huge amount of time, a huge amount of money mapping all those genetic traits I showed you before. And everything, I can summarize with this one simple slide, you know, many, many years of work, everything mapped to this inversion on the X, this is version on the X, and this is version on the second chromosome. And that's it. Everything mapped to those three places. That was very depressing. But when Carlos Machado did the, the original DNA sequence based approaches, he actually found that these are also the only parts of the genome that actually have sequence differences between the species. But if you look down here, Drosophila pseudobscura and Drosophila persimilis look exactly the same. But if you look within the inverted region, there are many sequence differences between the two species. So, we thought maybe this prevention of recombination, stopping recombination as what happens with an inversion, allows the two types to persist. Right? If you prevent recombination, then two distinct types are maintained, like the, the, the picture I showed you here at the beginning. You inherit a complete inverted region from one parent or from the other parent. You get a whole piece from Drosophila pseudobscura or a whole piece from Drosophila pseudobscura. And these do this because they prevent recombination. They don't recover the crossover products. So we, do, we put together a hypothesis. Maybe pseudobscura for simplest are distinct gene pools or distinct species because of differences maintained in the inverted regions. So this shows you here they're, they're exchanging genes, but if there's one part of the chromosome, they don't exchange. So this could be pseudobscura, this could be for simplest. If this is true, if we didn't have the inversions, they wouldn't fuse. They would be one big species. So summarizing, we have two species, they differ by three or chromosomal inversions. All trait differences map to the inverted regions. We see many sequence differences in inverted regions and many shared variations, much shared variation in the regions. So we hypothesize that inversions facilitate the persistence of these species, perhaps because of their effects on recombination. There is some support for this in other taxa too, with sunflowers from elegant work from Warren Beesburg's lab, 
ragweedus, which I've made of the mosquitoes. Um, and this fits some models for the accumulation of the category. So now let me show you the more recent work. This is very old work. Let me show you the more recent work. So we've used several DNA sequence-based approaches to test this. And I'll show you three questions and then the answers from those three questions. To, uh, to approach these questions, we used multiple sequencing approaches. First, we did standard targeted Sanger sequencing in local regions where we just did a PCR and sequence of particular spots along the genome. This is nice because we can have data from many strains, but our coverage is very limited, so you can only sequence you know, a couple of thousand bases. We also use the published genome sequence assemblies when those became available. This is great for coverage when we have one strain of Pseudoscura and one strain of Persimilis. So these are, are complementary when they have different weaknesses. Later, we switched to 454. This is a sequencing technology, uh, partial resequences from extra strains. And more recently, we've been using Illumina complete resequences of many strains from Sophos Pseudoscura. So we have a lot more ability now to look at the whole genome. 